Hi, I'm Dr. Crutchfield. I work at our Verona office at Valley Pediatrics. I hope this video finds you and your family staying well and healthy. Um, and I know a lot of you are spending a lot more time outdoors with your kids uh, during this time of social distancing and school and daycare closures. So I thought it might be a good time to just remind everybody that spring is definitely the season that we start to see more ticks emerging. Um, so I thought I would just touch on tick bites and what those may mean for you or your child. Um, so as with lots of pediatric illnesses, the most important thing is prevention. So if you know you're going to be outdoors for an extended period of time, the safest thing is to actually have your child wear long sleeves, long pants, um, and if they're going to be tromping around in high grass especially, um, have them tuck their pants into their socks. Um, but if it's super hot, that's a no-go then just make sure that you spray them down with insect repellent or bug spray. And specifically, you want to use one that contains DEET, D-E-E-T. Um, DEET is the chemical that's most effective at repelling bugs from attaching to your child's skin. Um, DEET can be irritating to the skin, so you want to make sure that you don't use more than 30% DEET on your child. Um, that will be labeled generally on the bottom of the front of the bottle or can. Um, and if not, it'll be on the back. Um, something like Deep Woods Off has 25% DEET, so that would be safe to use. You just want to make sure that you avoid the face and eye area. Um, and if your child is younger and puts their hands in their mouth or you're going to be eating while you're outdoors, um, you want to avoid the hands as well. Um, also important to remember to wash it off in the evening after you come in from outside. So bath time, shower time. Um, and that's also a good time to do a good thorough skin check. So make sure that you're not missing any ticks, which may be embedded in the skin. Um, places that ticks like to hide are in the skin fold areas. So armpits, groin, um, and then certainly in the scalp. Those are important to check as well. Um, so what do you do if you find a tick? Certainly you want to try to remove it as soon as you found it. Um, one trick that you can try first before getting out the tweezers is uh, actually soaking a cotton ball with a liquid soap, so a dish, dish detergent um, or a liquid hand soap, and you'll apply the soaked cotton ball directly on top of the tick, um, and you let it sit for 30 seconds, and sometimes if you're lucky, the um, when you go to pull away the cotton ball, the tick will have actually detached as well. Um, if not, then the best thing to do is to get some fine tip tweezers and you um, basically just want to get as close to the skin edge as you can to get closest to the head part of the tick. And you don't want to twist or turn. You just kind of want to pull up straight up with steady pressure. And that will minimize the risk of a part of the tick being stuck in your child's skin. If that happens, not a huge deal. Um, if it's a big enough piece that you think you can safely get to with a sterile needle or sterile tweezers, um, you can kind of gently just uncover that top layer of skin and try to pull it out. Um, if it's a teeny tiny piece, generally the skin will work it out on its own over time. Um, but if you're at all worried or nervous that there's a piece, of, a piece of the tick still in there, we're always happy to take a peek and see if it's something that we can help you try to work out or um, if you can just kind of keep an eye on it. Um, after that, wash hands, flush the tick down the toilet. And I usually recommend just applying an antibiotic ointment like a Neosporin just once on the side of the tick bite just to further prevent any sorts of infection. Um, and then once the tick's off, it is important to just keep an eye out for any signs or symptoms of a tick-borne illness developing in the weeks to months to come. So um, most tick-borne illnesses with Lyme disease or Rocky Mountain spotted fever being some of the ones you may have heard of, um, those generally present with a rash fever, so unexplained fever, no cold symptoms or anything else to go along with the fevers, um, fatigue, headaches, uh, big swollen painful joints. Those are typically the symptoms that we'll see um, develop. And Lyme disease is the most uh, common of the tick-borne illness illnesses that we see. Um, in about 90% of kids who develop Lyme disease, they'll develop the typical bullseye rash. Um, and that usually develops within seven to 14 days of the tick bite. Usually looks like a um, central red area with a ring around that of a lighter area or whiteness um, that's just skin colored. And then beyond that, a big red ring. So it looks like a target bullseye. Um, 
it is important to remember that uh, most kids will actually get a little red raised bump right at the site of the tick bite within a day or two of the tick. And that is usually just the skin's normal reaction to the tick having been there and is usually nothing to worry about. Um, some people worry that they're gonna miss seeing the bullseye rash, but it actually, once it does develop, it generally enlarges over the course of a few days. So you generally won't miss it as long as you're giving your child regular baths. Um, it's also good to know that um, Lyme disease is actually very rare. Um, we do see it here, but it only gets uh, transmitted in about one to 3% of tick bites. And that's partly because not all ticks are infected with the bacteria that cause um, Lyme disease. And also they have to be embedded in the skin and feed um, on the skin for 36 to 72 hours before they can even pass that bacteria to the human host. Um, so I hope that's also empowering to know that um, that it's still safe to have your kids outside this time of year. And we certainly encourage you to spend time outside. Just, just make sure that you are using sunscreen. Um, we've definitely already started to see some sunburns and poison ivy. Um, so do it safely, but enjoy your time outdoors. And um, please stay safe and healthy. And let us know if there's any other topics that you think would be helpful uh, for us to touch on during this time of social distancing. Bye-bye.